Let's talk about power over coax, or POC. For today's automotive applications, POC has been an innovation game changer. Not only does it reduce weight and cabling because it transmits both power and data over a single cable, but that also means less weight, lower wire harness complexity, also saves space, and reduces your overall bill of materials. And that doesn't even scratch the surface when it comes to the signal integrity, increased reliability, and high-speed data communication. But where is POC technology headed in the future? And how can I take advantage of it for my next design? I'm glad you asked, my friends, because that's exactly where we're headed today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Eric Landy from TDK and I explore the impact POC communication has had on automotive innovation the benefits that TDK Power Over Coax Solutions can bring to your next design, and where POC technology is headed in the future. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TDK. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about POC or power over coax today. So to start things off, Eric, you have a video to share with us that gives us a brief introduction to POC, right? Yeah, so we'd love to show you our introduction into TDK's POC offerings and inductors. This is also available on YouTube to watch. So if you have some time to spare on YouTube, you can also check it out there. High-performance automobiles are essential for the safe and secure coexistence of people and automobiles in a society. As one of these functions, we will introduce the added value of in-vehicle camera communication called POC. POC has the advantage of reducing the number of cables wired inside the vehicle, leading to a reduction in vehicle weight and lower fuel consumption. It also contributes to a clean global environment by reducing carbon dioxide emissions. ADAS supports safe driving by sensing the surrounding conditions using multiple in-vehicle cameras and sensors. Onboard cameras are placed at the front, rear and sides of the vehicle, and the footage is controlled by an assistance system to ensure a safe and secure drive. The circuit configuration of an in-vehicle camera is powered by a battery and is connected to the camera via a control circuit, called an ECU. The connection between an ECU and an in-vehicle camera usually consists of two wires, a signal wire and a power wire. But POC is a communication method that realizes these with a single coaxial cable. This is the biggest selling point of the POC. POC requires a filter consisting of multiple inductors to separate signal and power before processing the signal. TDK develops, designs, and commercializes inductors for POC using three different processes, wire wound, multilayer, and thin film. TDK offers an extensive lineup of inductors for POC applications by current rating and communication speed. That was great, Eric. Now, first, talk to me about all of the different components in a vehicle that can be driven by POC. Yeah, power over coaxial actually drives sensors and cameras in your ADOS system or your advanced driving autonomous system. And this actually sends both power and data over the same conductor. So what that does is it allows for different cameras and different types of sensors to be placed all around the vehicle. So you can see, for instance, there's driver monitoring cameras, side view cameras, front sensing cameras, LIDAR and radar, side mirrorless cameras, and also ultrasonics that are included in your car. All of these are stitched together in a sensor fusion that allows the car to create a virtual image of its surroundings. 
Very cool. Now, Eric, where do you see POC technology being used today versus in the future? So where is POC headed from here? Yes, today POC or power over coaxial is being utilized in some vehicles for some data fusion. So cameras, ultrasonics, radar, and LIDAR are all equipped on today's vehicles. What we're seeing today is actually the density and the number of sensors going up. So this increased density is also causing increased numbers of cable bundles that need to be added to the vehicle in order to support these sensors. So POC will be used and utilized in order to help reduce the number of cables effectively having the number of cables that you need for each of your sensors. So you can run both your power and your data over a single line. Traditionally, as I said before, you needed two cables. And so by reducing down to one cable, we increase the efficiency of your vehicle, which is very key to EVs and hybrid vehicles, especially. Fantastic. Okay. So Eric, what do you think are the biggest advantages of POC communications? Oh, the biggest advantages of POC communications is the simplification of your wiring harnesses. So instead of using two separate feeds for both your data and your power, you actually combine into a single cable. So it's a single jacketed cable that has normally a solid core type of wire, but it can also be a braided wire as well. And it's normally encoded with a jacket to help with signal interference. So this does two things. One, increases your signal integrity across your data, but also allows you to run power over the same line as well. So really, it comes into the weight savings and also the reduction of components in your design. All right. So can you walk me through what a POC filter combination would look like? Yeah, a POC filter combination includes a series of inductors. Therefore, in this particular example, we're looking at the VLS, the ADL 3225 VM, and then also the ADL 3225 VM 2R2 in a cascading style of design. And as you can see, by including these three filters within the design, we're able to separate out the power and the I squared C and video signal here on the impedance chart. So therefore, we're keeping the high impedance required for I squared C and for video signal frequencies, but using one to three coils in our system. So what kind of advancements is TDK working on in this arena? When it comes to POC designs, specifically TDK can provide minimized number of inductors in POC design systems. So typically you'd have three to four filters in your system. TDK's POC offerings optimize your layout of reducing the number of filters required or number of inductive elements. So we're able to utilize our specialized design and manufacturing. And so we can reduce the DC resistance uh, while maintaining stable impedance across wide frequency ranges. So that also leads into signal integrity as well. So as electrical and data density increases in the vehicle, electromagnetic interference also increases because of the number of signals that are being pushed around in your car. So by using TDK's POC filtering components, we're able to combat that interference by eliminating stray signals, leaving your sense of data intact. So what kind of specific solutions does TDK offer when it comes to POCs? So taking a look at our POC solutions that we have on offer today, you can see that we have different optimizations for different POC current levels. So there are different power levels that POC can offer that TDK can support. And we also support all the different data rates as well, because POC, like many other things in the automotive industry, runs on a standard, of course. So, of course, each of those standards are a little bit different that have a little bit different current requirement and a little bit different signaling requirements. But TDK has solutions for those. And as you can see on the right-hand side, we have some applicable standards, such as the GMSL, the FPD link, the HSMT, ASA, MIPI, GVIF, and CLL. These are all different standards that TDK supports. And, of course, these are all AECQ 200, so again, automotive grade compliant, used for your automotive solutions. So, Eric, 
if my audience wants more information about this topic, where should they go and what does TDK have to offer? So if you want to have more information available to you for POC topics, TDK also provides a series of application notes available on our website. So we have an explainer on the overviews of POC, design trends, product overview, and in-vehicle networking. We have an additional informational packet on implementing POC, so different architectures, design considerations, and EMI countermeasures that you can use in your system. And then finally, we also provide an array of engineering tools. So as I said before, we have application notes dealing with integration and where the future of POC is going. But we also have application notes helping you select filters, also giving you product recommendations, and also giving you very detailed information on the standards. We have reference designs available at the bottom of that applications note page. We also have EMC testing available for your designs. So if you have some interference problems, you can always contact TDK and we'd be happy to run some EMI testing for you. And then also finally, we have inductor selection tool called the SimCal Studio, which is a very powerful tool that allows designers to go in and actually select their own inductors given a set of parameters that they input on the tool itself. So there's a wide variety of tools available on TDK's website, but you can also contact us directly at tdk.com. Fantastic. Well, Eric, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia, and I appreciate your time and your audience's time. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TDK. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash ee journal.